SB 1000 would require consumer warning labels be placed on sweetened beverages such as soda, sport drinks, energy drinks, and sweetened teas, which contain 75 calories or more per 12 ounces sold in California. When the science is this conclusive, the state of California and the beverage industry have an absolute responsibility to take steps to inform consumers of the adverse health impacts of sweetened beverages. And I'd like at this point to thank the co-sponsors of this legislation, the California Medical Association, the Latino Coalition for a Healthy California, the California Black Health Network, and the California Center for Public Health Advocacy. The California Center for Public Health Advocacy has been working for more than a decade to find solutions to the obesity and diabetes epidemics. We've worked with the legislature here in California to remove soda and junk food from schools, to, to get first-time funding, ongoing funding for physical education, and to become the first state in the nation to require calorie information to be posted on menus and menu boards in chain restaurants. All of those tough legislative battles in all of them, our success was driven in large part by solid science about the need for change. Where SB 1000 is concerned, the science is even more compelling. As the Senator said, there is now overwhelming evidence that soda and other sugary drinks play a central and unique role in the development of obesity, diabetes, and tooth decay. Soda and other sugary drinks are the number one source of added sugar in the American diet. And they're the single largest contributor to the obesity epidemic. Consumption among teens is, con is continuing to climb with two thirds of California teens drinking a soda or more a day. And unique about beverages is that the calories in those products, they don't satisfy hunger the way solid foods do, or even the way milk does. So now diabetes, an insidious and life-threatening disease that has doubled among Americans in the last 30 years. Diabetes is the leading cause for rising health care costs in the United States. The contribution of sugary drinks to the diabetes epidemic is frightening. Studies show that when we drink liquid sugar, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream in as little as 30 minutes, and that much of it is then converted directly into fat. Clinical studies, the gold standard of scientific research, shows that drinking these products for just two weeks increases LDL cholesterol and triglycerides by 20%. Drink these products for six months, and the amount of fat in your liver increases by 150%. Finally, sugary drinks are a disaster for our teeth. Study after study show that children who drink soda and other sugary drinks develop more and worse cavities. Faced with overwhelming and unimpeachable science showing the central and unique role of soda and other sugary drinks, that how they play in the development of obesity and diabetes and tooth decay. As the Senator said, California has a responsibility to warn consumers about these harmful effects. SB 1000 is all about education. This warning label tells the truth about soda and then lets consumers decide for themselves what to drink. As a family physician, I am challenged daily in helping my patients address obesity-related illnesses that they are dealing with, namely type 2 diabetes and heart conditions. Uh, information that I share with each of my patients who are overweight, if they drink sugary beverages, I tell them to stop and I tell them why it's important that they do so. But the science on this issue is clear. 
When a product like sugary sweetened beverages have such widespread and measurable health consequences, those of us entrusted with the health of our community must take action. It's not enough just to share with my patients the information. We must move beyond the exam room, beyond medical offices, looking upstream at the origin of the issue and dealing with it there. So informing consumers of the serious health implications associated with sugar-sweetened beverages is a logical and concrete step that we can take towards curbing California's rates of obesity-related illnesses. This is an action which has precedent. The age of onset of diabetes is, is lowering. People are getting diabetes at a much younger age. Telling stories. Uh, my own family, we have a history of diabetes as well. Um, you know, we've dealt with the amputations, the progressive amputations, starting with the toe, then the ankle, then the knee, the colostomy bag. It's, it's an agonizing thing to watch. It's a much more agonizing thing to experience. Knowledge is power, folks. What happens when you drink these sodas on a regular basis and what the impact can be on your body is important. We need our African-American communities, which have suffered from diabetes and the ravages of obesity, to eat and drink differently. We want to give them the information they need to help them change their health outcomes. A label means you ask questions. It leads to dialogue, and dialogue leads to learning. And we must help our families and our communities understand just how harmful these products are. Labeling provides us with that opportunity. Our hope would be that it would pave the way for a national standard uh, of similar label warning. The epidemic is real is we've been losing the war with the multi-million dollar advertising campaigns that are coming into every household targeting children, particularly targeting children of color with high profile uh, celebrities and athletes saying your life will improve the more you drink these products. What they're not telling them is what these products can do. So we see SB 1000 as a way of raising the profile of these known health risks, but it's going to be part of an integrated public health campaign. The wording of the warning label and the 75 calorie limit was established by a national consensus panel of some of the leading nutrition and health experts in the country. Putting a warning label on, um, on beverages is a big deal. The determination of which beverages it sh they will go on uh, needs to be driven by rock-solid science. The science about the effects of sugary drinks is absolutely rock-solid. And the SB 1000 is being um, driven by where the science has taken us. And the science is saying sugary drinks are harmful. Um, the problem is it's an emergency circumstance. And for the families and children who haven't had access to the good information, um, they're not going to get a second chance when they're facing preventable diabetes, tooth decay, heart disease, et cetera. So we see it as a public health emergency. We see this as the appropriate intervention right now. But the evidence is incontrovertible that sh sugar delivered in a liquid form is the most damaging and the most provocative in terms of leading to preventable diabetes, obesity, heart disease, et cetera. But for now, uh, we see this as the most immediate remedy that uh, win, lose, or draw on attacks. We should as a state, and I think we invite the industry to work with us to provide the notice necessary. They challenged the sugar sweetened beverage tax by saying it's really an issue of public education. So we're taking their lead, we're taking their advice, and we're inviting them to join us in educating the consuming public.